Advertisements in television are littered with false representations of women. The characters they portray are generally thin, big-breasted, and all-around physically beautiful. Young women see these and tend to feel the need to be like these women, but they fail to realize that these characters, they're not real, and they're being sexually objectified. What is objectification? When an image represents a woman passively and demonstrates no other attributes aside from her physical features and sexual nature, this is objectification. Petit jeu, c'est là qu'on commence à s'amuser puis qu'on va vous demander d'équiser vos yeux. Vous allez toujours avoir des images, une qui vient d'une revue adolescente, une qui vient d'une revue pornographique. Laquelle est ado, laquelle est porno? Donc, a porno ou ado? A ado, B porno? Laquelle? In the following video documentary, we will discuss the objectification of women throughout advertising and television more specifically. We will discuss its negative effects on women's self-conception and how this same exposure distorts men's view of women's sexual nature, leading to objectification. In ads, there is a massive objectification of women and emphasis on parts of their bodies. Dr. Jean Kilborn says that women are described by their legs, bottoms, breasts, lips, lashes. In a culture that is obsessed by physical attractiveness, we can see why women learn to change themselves in order to follow that hypersexual expectation. You'll look younger, smaller, lighter, fuller, tighter, thinner, softer. It really works. Professor Karen Dill has a different way to demonstrate the impact of media on viewers. If you picture in your mind a woman in a swimsuit and later think of what the average American woman looks like in a swimsuit, will the images match? Probably not. The first image that comes to mind is of a young woman, very thin, beautiful, and with big breasts. That means that we will make the judgment that women in swimsuits do or should look like those women we see on TV, movies, magazines, and even video games. For men, the result may be having higher expectations of the appearance of the woman in their lives. On the other hand though, Sut Jolly, professor of communication at the University of Massachusetts, thinks that it's not so bad to have a little objectification, because sex and gender is in everyone's everyday life. The problem is when a little objectification becomes too much objectification and develops into something dangerous for society. Repeatedly representing women as hypersexual, childlike and submissive, will have a strong influence on how females are perceived in the community. During the 2000 Puerto Rican Day Pride Parade in New York City, the public space of Central Park turned into a literal war zone for scores of women who were doused, sexually assaulted, and stripped of their clothes by groups of men who felt they had an entitlement to enact their desires on any female body. In fact, what was most striking about these images was how familiar they were. Advertisement is a good example of this. Advertisers continually attempt to represent the parent-child relationship between men and women. An early 90s study explained that women still thought that advertisements treated them mainly as sex objects, showed them as fundamentally dependent on men, and found the portrayal of women in advertising to be particularly offensive. We must understand that advertisements are representations, not reality. The way real women act and the reality of their sex life is not accurately portrayed in advertisements. Electric shivers across my skin. It's like a fever. You're my only medicine. Could I be dreaming of Such 
the new body spray from Axe. We can see it everywhere in the media, even in television. A study among college-age women by Jennifer Stevens Aubrey of the University of Missouri showed that relations do in fact exist between television exposure and the sexual self-concept. The effects exist more prominently in three types of exposure, soap operas, primetime dramas, and the amount of time spent watching television. The study predicted negative views of sexual self-concept among women. This suggests that television was damaging to the sexual self-concept. Two major television sexual scripts are relevant to women. One, female characters as sexual objects which reduces them to mere objects that exist for the pleasure of consumption of others, which diminishes their feelings about their own sexuality. Two. Female characters are more often punished for initiating sexual behavior than men when initiating the same behavior. Both of these diminish women's sexual agency. These scripts solidify the message that women are not meant to be sexually assertive. If women decode these negative scripts about female sexuality, it is not surprising that television exposure makes women feel anxious and self-conscious about their sexuality. Journalist Catherine Debney discusses in her column how the television series Two and a Half Men introduces the female characters and their relationships with the men. She explains that Two and a Half Men is the perfect title because there's no real woman in it, sure. There are beauty queens, fat ladies, mean mothers, pushy bitches, ex-wives, bunny boilers, dumb blondes and whores, but no female characters. Just caricatures. No real woman. Just slaves, trophies, and bitches. Hey Dad, what's a booty call? <laughs> oh, oh, hey, hey Jake, you, uh, you, you remember Candy? Sure. Hi Candy. Yeah. Hi. So what's a booty call? Uh, the, uh, the Candy came by to, to, uh, to do... Aubrey also argues that television exposure increases sexual dissatisfaction because viewers see the idealized version of sexuality on television and think that their own experiences fall short. If you apply this to woman, it is possible that female viewers are particularly attuned to the sexiness of the ideal appearance of characters portrayed on television, such as the television series Two and a Half Men. When female viewers compare themselves with ideal comparison targets, the beautiful young woman that Charlie sleeps with, and realize that their appearance falls short of the sexy ideal that they represent, they are likely to experience emotional distress and decrease in self-esteem. Adding to this, Kimberly Bissell and Peikin Zhu both PhD graduates writing for the International Communication Association explain that social comparison theory suggests that through the prevalence of thin or ideal females in the media, young women may attempt to model what they see because they are represented with the ideal of a thin body and compare their body shape to what is portrayed in the media as ideal. Not reaching these often unattainable goals can explain the dissatisfaction of women's self-concept. Furthermore, if these ideal women are poorly treated and constantly sexified throughout episodes, and this is seen as okay, failing to achieve it can greatly distort a woman's perception of sexuality and perhaps lead to their belief of their bodies as sexual objects. Professor Melissa Milkey explains how the third person effect theory acts in minds of the viewers watching objectified women on media. She states that individuals see themselves through the eyes of others who they assume have been affected significantly by mass media imagery, meaning that women believe that others, like men, will expect them to look and act like the women portrayed in media. According to Kilborn from Boston University, the sexual objectification of women is more like a sexual victimization of women, because when you dehumanize a gender, it's easier for the other gender to be violent towards them. Also, Julian Stankiewicz and Francine Rosalini argue that today's type of advertisements are influencing young men to associate sex with violence against women. Although this seems overwhelming and negative, Kilborn explains that some resources are trying to instill change, like Bridget, a German magazine. It decided to only have real women photographed in their publications, not relying on the stereotypical 5'11", long-haired, 120-pound woman. All this to change how people think. To remind people that women are not to be solely graded on a curve. Information is the best way to fight the sexual objectification of women in media, particularly in advertisement and television. Knowing that women as sex objects are ubiquitous in media today, what are the long-term effects of this on a real woman?